more supple horse relies on a few important ingredients. One of my favorite ingredients is one that often meets with different responses in clinics. And it, and it goes like this. I tell people, you have to learn to love the canter. And I say it meets with different responses because depending on whether or not your horse has a good canter and one that's fun to ride, some people tend to avoid riding the canter if it's a big mess, your horse is running off with his head up in the air and these kinds of things. Within reason, even a horse that doesn't have a, a perfectly balanced canter yet, they need to spend time in the canter on a regular, consistent basis. There's a few reasons for it, but predominantly, and researchers have studied this recently, as recently as the last couple of years with instant feedback sensors, but in the canter, the horse's back musculature contracts the most fully out of all of the gates. So to create that pulsating motion where the muscle contracts and then releases, it's the fullest at the canter. In the trot, the back has to provide more of a, a stabilizing platform to balance out the diagonal pairs of legs. So what happens is you create a lot of strength in the trot, but that strength sometimes is lacking in flexibility. And it's the canner with the undulating wave-like motions through the spine that can give you the flexibility we're looking for. And also the hinge point for the horse's hind leg is different in the canner than it is in the trot. It swings from higher up in the sacrum, whereas in the trot, it hinges from the hip of the horse. So you're stimulating those spinal nerves up by the sacrum that come down and activate the hind leg, which is why almost always after you've cantered, the trot feels a lot better. It feels springier and more buoyant and more enjoyable. So learn to love the canter. Mm -hmm.